Computing, and welcome to Episode 5 of the 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast. This one is all about cool monitors. Now, since the beginning, in the, the early 80s, uh, Amigas have been unique in that they've wanted to use 15 kilohertz monitors. Uh, now, back in the day, that was fairly normal. That was fairly traditional for like a, a CGA display or on a, a, a PC compatible machine back then, um, but only in maybe four colors or so. Now, Amigas were unique because they used the same kind of signal that American televisions use, NTSC, which I believe stands for Never Twice Same Color, from what I understand. Uh, but that signal works at, at 15 kilohertz, just like your regular television did. Uh, it gave it a certain benefit of being able to just hook right up to many televisions of the day with a composite uh, output that many of the Amigas had, or could be easily added with something like the uh, 8520 composite adapter that we could all put on our Amiga 500s if we needed to. Uh, there were also some fantastic monitors back in the day. Uh, I owned a Commodore 1084 and a 1080, I believe, and the picture quality on those was stupendous. I remember hooking up my, my VHS. No, no, it was my Beta. I had a Beta back in the day, too. Hooking up my Betamax player in the late 80s to my Commodore 1084 monitor just looked absolutely fantastic. It just, everything popped, it was sharp, but then we ran into things like, you know, interlaced displays uh, if we went beyond a certain resolution. Um, but it was usable back then. We could get 15 kilohertz monitors fairly easily. Uh, then as the 90s rolled around, VGA monitors started to take over the scene and, and it started to get a little bit more difficult uh, for us in Amiga land to brag about our displays when we had the, you know, flickery jittery pictures on our high resolution displays. Um, now the A3000 handled that very nicely with a little switch on the back to switch it from 15 kilohertz up to a standard VGA signal, 31 kilohertz. You could put any monitor in the world on there and it would work just perfectly. Some people came out with other flicker fixing options. Commodore had their own versions uh, uh, of boards you could put in like an Amiga 2000 and make it flicker fixing. Or, like I bought in the, I think it was the mid to late 90s, I think it might have even been Indivision uh, who put this little thing out. This is a flicker fixture that I still use to this day. Hooks up to the standard RGB connector on our traditional Amigas and has a VGA connector on the outside that makes the display work with just about any kind of monitor I can throw at it, whether it's an LCD or, a, or anything like that. Um, it works pretty well and to this day, you know, I still use it all the time. But it would be nice sometimes to be able to use those traditional 15 kilohertz displays uh, on our Amigas. Uh, many of us use them for, for games. Um, being able to look at those games in their original resolutions at 15 kilohertz, it's kind of nice. So, I've been looking around. There have been a couple of monitors that are still made today that will scan down to 15 kilohertz. Uh, there's a website let me show you. There's a website that has some really, really useful information on it about these 15 kilohertz monitors that still work on our beloved Amigas. The website is 15kh.wiki.com. Uh, I'll also put that in, a, in the link of the, of the description uh, so you're able to get to it. Now this website lists a lot of monitors that have been made in the past couple of years that still work fine at 15 kilohertz and it gives a description of the size of the monitor, like here's a 21.5 inch, maximum resolution 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9, DVI, VGA, and it also tries to give a description 
if it works well or not. Like this particular monitor here works, the pixels are uneven and pretty ugly. Also can't take out of 16 by 9 mode. A500 with full overscan, both non-interlaced, but flickers. So it gives some good descriptions of what these particular monitors do. And you're going to recognize these names. Acer, Asus, BenQ, Dell, uh, Fujitsu, LG, NEC. And the cool thing is, is some of these are still available. Uh, you can order them right off of Amazon. Now, here's the cool thing. Uh, just the other day, I was at one of my uh, local, uh, not a really a retro computer store. It's kind of a used computer reseller here in Tucson called Rise. Uh, and I started poking around at their monitors that they had. And lo and behold, I found an Acer V22 6 HQL with a, the subpart number UMWV6AAB01. And from what I've read, this was one of the better monitors that works with the Amiga without any kind of configuring at all. Now, many of you may have noticed that I always do keep a second monitor uh, right behind me here. I connected my Amiga 4000. I have a CyberGraphics 64 3D card in my Amiga that puts out a rock solid 31 kilohertz display to my nice 19 inch uh, Acer monitor here. Uh, 16 million colors, but there are times that I need it to display the traditional Amiga displays, the 320 by 200, the 640 by, by 400 displays. Uh, now in the past I've always used my little BenQ monitor with my adapter here, but I like to use my adapter on all of my other goodies. My Amiga 2000s I'm fixing, my, my uh, Amiga 500, and I, it just gets tiring having to constantly plug and unplug this little guy from the back. So I found this new monitor, this Acer, 45 bucks. Now online on, on uh, Amazon, I've seen them ranging from 90 to $100. So even that, really reasonably priced. And I think worth the price of admission to do what I'm about to show you here. I'm going to choose a nice traditional NTSC 640 by 480. And it comes up just fine. You see the lovely flicker, the lovely interlaced flicker that we all uh, know and love? Comes up just perfect. If I want to use that as an actual screen mode, my workbench just reformats right there. 640 by 480 interlaced, just like on our old 1084 monitors. Looks pretty darn good, too. Uh, handles. Uh, Overscan just fine too. I, I just happen to not have Overscan turned on. And through the magic of Adobe Premiere, we magically automatically have nice big fat Overscan here. Now you'll notice that lovely graphics corruption. That's because in my startup sequence I must still have something like a F blit not set up properly, so it corrupts my uh, my displays on OS 3.9. I never see that because I always use my retargetable graphics, but that's just a, something that I can tweak out. Other screen modes. Here we go. Here's a nice one. 320 by 200. Now, this is how we should all be using our workbench right here. That's <laughs> some serious icons. I love it. Now, here's a great test. This is Doom Attack running on 320 by 200. Yeah, I'm going to whip out here. See, it runs pretty, pretty 
darn well. this all up was the fact that I found a couple of my uh, old uh, DC TV slow scan converters. Uh, I'm going to be doing an episode on that in a week or so. Uh, I watched an episode of uh, the Guru Meditation uh, with Amiga Bill and Anthony. Awesome guys. Seriously, watch their videos. They're so cool. Uh, and they did a, a show on the Digiview. So it got me thinking about my digital composite television, my DCTV. And I realized that it liked to put its display on a separate screen, on an RGB screen. And I just wasn't happy with how it was working with my little, uh, my scan doubler. So that's what prompted me to start looking at other ways to display at 15 kilohertz. And the other cool thing I discovered, hadn't really thought about it before was this little beauty. This is a Hitachi projector. Uh, see on the back here, it's got a couple of uh, VGA inputs, USB, uh, we've got S-Video, we've got uh, regular uh, composite, we've got audio in, audio out. Uh, just a nice little cheap and cheerful projector. I bought this at the same place in Tucson. 75 bucks used, it's great. But the thing I discovered when I was playing with it, it sinks to 15 kilohertz like a dream. Let me show you. Look at that handsome guy. Look at that ham handsome guy in ham six mode coming on through my Hitachi projector. Look at that. So, I think that's actually fairly clever myself. Sinks right up at 15 kilohertz without a second thought. Now let's get ourselves workbench up there projected on the wall. We'll do a nice 640 by 480 workbench. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and you know, I, I guess there's no reason it, it particular that it would not uh, not sink at uh, 15 kilohertz, but I've just never really thought about it before. And the other cool thing, if you'll notice, we're at 640 by 480, so this should be interlaced like crazy. It's a rock solid display. And you get the added benefit of, you know, being able to do, uh, rah! hey, hey, what's your name? You can do hand puppets, which is always fantastic to do when you're doing an Amiga podcast. This is Doug from Dynamic Computing. Signing out.